This week, we're learning about the contest mode for the incoming Garden of Salvation Raid in Destiny 2 Shadowkeep, as well as some preparatory work that you PC players will need to get done before that expansion comes out, and a few other things like some quality of life changes that are going to be coming in Update 2.6.0. What's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link. And today is Thursday, September 19th, 2019. You know what that means. It's time to cover the Bungie Weekly Blog this week at Bungie. And this week, it's going to be a lot of stuff about the contest mode for the upcoming raid. But really, there's not too much to talk about this week, so hopefully this one won't take too long. First things first, we did have some big news drop earlier in the week. Of course, we had the release of the Bungie Vidoc, The Moon and Beyond. This is a fantastic documentary that showed us some new things about Shadowkeep. We got stuff like the Lectern of Enchantment, which is going to be a new in-game vendor that you're going to be going and picking up bounties from and then using to create new weapons and stuff. And we also got to see a great roadmap for the content that we're going to be getting in the seasons beyond the initial Shadowkeep release. There was plenty of information to be covered from all that stuff, and we have a video covering all of it right here on the channel. There will be a link to that in the description box below. Additionally, we also got the fantastic news that Bungie has decided to roll in the cost of the annual pass into the Forsaken release. Basically, what that means is if you already own Forsaken, you now also own the annual pass for free. If you hadn't bought the annual pass, so that's stuff like the Black Armory, Season of the Drifter, and of course Season of Opulence, you're now retroactively going to get access to that content for free if you already own Forsaken. It's a great change they decided to make, and I could not be happier. But let's go ahead and dive on into this week's TWAB. First things first, we've got some news about the contest mode for Worlds First and the Garden of Salvation raid. Contest mode, of course, will be active for the first 24 hours, similar to the Crown of Sorrow World's First completion. While contest is active, players will face an enforced challenge throughout the raid. Power beyond certain levels will provide no additional advantage for a given fight. For example, for the first fight, power levels above 890 don't provide any advantage. And for the final fight, power levels above 920 don't provide any advantage either. After that initial 24-hour period ends, they will disable contest mode and players can take full advantage of their higher power to overcome the raid's challenges. This is the same challenge that they put into effect, like I said before, for the Crown of Sorrow. I think it worked out pretty well there. It created a nice, even playing field for all of the players trying to fight for Worlds First. And I'm really happy that they're going to be bringing it back again for the Garden of Salvation. And of course, as a part of this, this also kind of tells us that we're going to be able to grind up to power level 900 within that first week. Bungie's fully prepared for that. So one way or another, the world's first raid run is going to be something special this time around. But of course, as always, the reward for the world's first fire team completion, the world's first six-man group to beat the raid, will receive the world championship belt. But as usual, that's not the only reward that's going to be out there for players. You don't have to be world's first to get something exclusive. If you and your fire team manage to beat the raid within the first 24 hours, you're going to get access to an exclusive emblem. And then there's going to be an additional emblem for other players for whenever they beat the raid at their own leisure. So there we go, Guardians. The gauntlet has been thrown. You know the power levels you're going to have to grind up to, at least 920, if you want to be at least somewhat at level for the final challenge. So I hope you guys are ready to grind it out once October 1st comes around. But moving on, we've got a pretty big quality of life change, especially for you PC players out there in Destiny 2. Let me create a scenario for you. Have you ever found an awesome piece of armor or an awesome weapon that you know you have the perfect shader for? You go over to hover over that shader and you try to apply it. And for whatever reason, that first time you try to apply it doesn't go through. Second time doesn't go through. You keep holding that key. And for whatever reason, you just can't apply this shader or this mod or whatever it is you're putting on until like the 15th try. Well, thankfully, Bungie finally figured out what was causing that and they've implemented a fix. Or rather, they implemented a fix back in update 2.5.0. Apparently, this was an issue with some of the security features of the game and how it interacts with the game's UI. Basically, if you moved your cursor, your mouse, your analog stick at all while you were trying to apply these things, it would cancel the action as a safety feature. They disabled that back in 2.5.0 and it, for the most part, fixed that issue. But it also kind of created another issue that they're going to be working on solving in update 2.6.0, which of course releases alongside Shadowkeep on October 1st. Right now, that bug still can happen if, say, your inventory gets updated while you're trying to apply a mod or a shader. 
But the Bungie dev team has apparently figured out exactly how to fix this, and they'll be pushing that update out alongside Shadowkeep. And to that, I say thank you. That was one of the most frustrating bugs to deal with. It's something you had to fight with on console as well, but you especially had to deal with it a lot on PC where, you know, you're using your mouse and your keyboard and stuff. And it's really easy to wiggle your mouse just a little bit when you're trying to apply things. So I'm really glad they figured out an ultimate fix for that. But all right, finally, moving on to more talk about PC, we have got some information about the PC migration from Battle.net to Steam and how all of this is going to play out when Shadowkeep comes out next month. On October 1st, prior to the official launch of Shadowkeep, Destiny 2 will be taken offline for maintenance on all platforms. During this maintenance window, PC players who have linked their Steam accounts to their Bungie.net profile will automatically have their Guardians and Silver transferred from Battle.net over to Steam. Once maintenance concludes and Shadowkeep is officially launched, PC players who've undergone Steam linking will be able to launch Destiny 2 on Steam and immediately access their Guardians and Silver. However, migrated PC players should be aware that there will be a delay in the transfer of their Destiny 2 Forsaken licenses from Battle.net over to Steam. They continue on by stating that after the launch of Shadowkeep, Forsaken license transfers for Steam Link PC players will continue in the background until they're all complete. And while that work is underway, PC players can access all Destiny 2 content not reliant on a Forsaken license, as well as new Shadowkeep content if owned on Steam. And of course, all New Light content will be available to all players for free. Now you might be saying, well, what does that mean? Does that mean like the stuff that's tied to Forsaken I'm not going to be able to do or use like content in the Dreaming City and stuff like that? Well, thankfully, they go on to explain at least a little more of what's not going to be migrating immediately upon Shadowkeep's release. Examples of Forsaken content that will not be available to migrated PC players during this window include Forsaken Campaign Missions, Forsaken Quest Content, The Last Wish Raid, and the Shattered Throne Dungeon, while examples of Forsaken activities that will be available to players immediately since they will be bundled in with new light include the Gambit playlist activities, Forsaken Strikes in the Strike playlist, Forsaken Maps in Crucible, Patrols on the Tangled Shore, and Patrols on the Dreaming City, so you're not going to lose access to those world spaces, since they are going to be a part of the base game with Destiny 2 New Light. Really glad they cleared that up because it would have been a nightmare if they allowed Shadowkeep to come out, the migration happened, and then suddenly a bunch of PC players were like, whoa, 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 why can't I jump into Last Wish? So I'm very happy that they got ahead of this speeding locomotive and let us know beforehand. I am still a little bit confused there. They talk about activities, uh, which activities are going to be available and which ones aren't going to be available. And under the stuff that's not going to be initially available, remember, just during this initial transfer window when they're migrating all of the PC licenses from Battle.net over to Steam, uh, stuff like Forsaken Quest content. I hope that doesn't include, like, quest weapons and armor. If, like, uh, if, if I start up Shadowkeep on Steam with a full set of Last Wish gear, is that all going to be stripped off of me? Am I not going to have access to that? Sort of like if I had Wave Splitter equipped on my character and jumped over to PC? They go on to specify activities there, so I'm hoping that items that you got from some of those activities will still be available as well. But ultimately, we'll have to see. And of course, that's not the only thing to watch out for when Shadowkeep goes live. Player campaign progress across all platforms is also going to be affected by the change with Destiny 2 New Light. Specifically, if you have characters that haven't finished the campaign for the Red War, that's Destiny 2 Vanilla, Curse of Osiris, Warmind, and the Forsaken campaigns, you're going to be affected by this. Here's how. On October 1st, after Destiny 2 Update 2.6.0 rolls out, players who have not completed any of the above Destiny 2 campaigns will have their progress toward that campaign reset. So, if you're still in the middle of the Baron Hunts in Forsaken when Shadowkeep comes out, your progress is going to be reset to the initial Forsaken mission. Yeah, you're going to have to go through Cade's death all over again. Sorry, spoilers for you new Guardians out there. But they do go on to note that most in-game activities will generally be available to players as soon as they unlock their corresponding destinations. So you're going to get Last Wish opened up as soon as you unlock something like the Dreaming City. This is going to be a part of the accelerated player progression that will be introduced with New Light on October 1st. So basically, get those campaign missions done now unless you want to do them all over again when Shadowkeep comes out. But alright Guardians, that's pretty much it for the biggest bits of news contained in this week's issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. We've had some pretty crazy news weeks in previous weeks, so it's not too surprising that there wasn't too much to this one. We do still have one TWAB left before we head to the moon. 
And I'm sure we're going to be learning some pretty interesting stuff in that one. But that's it for the news. Those are my thoughts. Be sure to leave me yours down in the comment section below. Are you psyched for the world's first raid run of Garden of Salvation? How are you planning on power leveling yourself up to power level 900 by the time the raid comes out later that Saturday? Be sure to let me know. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, make sure you subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. But alright, that's going to be it for this one, Guardians. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.